So we're gonna go through my thought process in creating this building. Um, what I've initially done is gone to another blend file that I've already pre-created one and using that as a scale. I've also introduced a person which I know will be my scale. So everything I build off will be based off him. Now, the very first thing is always blocking. So if you've joined me on my live streams, we know that we go through the blocking process to make sure that's something that we like. Um, playing with the sizes of the bottom floor, the bottom floor is actually three meters and the next two floors are 2.5 meters each. And you can kind of see I'm just like a Minecraft thing. I'm not having just a specifically re um, rectangle box, but changing up the shapes a bit. And so now we're just going ahead, adding in some doors, very rudimentary, changing the floors, so on and so forth. And then we start looking at creating a sheer staircase. So the very basic way that I've done it is with a bevel and then using a custom profile, we can kind of like quickly slap it on. Now, as you can see, I created the staircase, it didn't really fit. So I'm gonna go at it again. The other thing as well is because we've made it three meters, it's gonna be a little bit different. And so it's a very quick way of creating a staircase. Something happened with the blend file, so I went ahead and just copy and pasted everything across, did it again, and so you can see now that I initially had the staircase only a meter wide. Later on, I do change the size of it, just because it doesn't, meter just seemed a little bit too thin. Um, and this is the kind of like the process of wrapping it around the building. Um, because I just kind of wanted that nice aesthetic. And also because I wanted the balcony, it didn't really line up. So that's kind of like how I came across it. Um, if you want me to release like the long form version of this, so you can watch them from start to finish at a slow place, please let me know. Um, adding the bits at the back there, they mean nothing. They just kind of there for decoration. Now I'm starting to go into a little bit more of the blocking. So creating a simple door frame. Nope, these are the actual doors themselves. And so these doors here, we kind of um, created very simple. I did kind of create a bit of a light on it, um, but I don't actually think I ended up using those little lights on the door. Um, the initial material here is just to have an ambient occlusion. One thing that I've been doing recently though, is been using the cavity option to kind of like view the mesh a little bit better. It gives a little bit more details something that from my suggestions from the live stream. And so I've taken that on board and it is growing on me. So now we're starting to break down the scene, give it some extra shape, so on and so forth. You can throw, see that I'm throwing on bevels. Didn't like how the top section worked there, so I undid that. And then we're going ahead and started creating, well, I know we haven't created some paneling yet, but this kind of like vents. Now, um, a lot of this is inspired by your sheet of mic, I believe, and I'll put a link in the description for that. Here we've been create. Here I qu <laughs> quickly created a staircase. Um, the way I've done it is created a face, and then in the modifiers I gave it a solidifier. Then actually no, I removed the solidifier. Then went into wireframe, and then that's how I made those bars there. It's just using the wireframe modifier, closing off the top there of filling the rim. Is that right? No, that's a solidify modifier. There's an option there to fill it so the uh, wireframe, and then kind of we have this cool wireframe that we can kind of copy across and very quick way of creating barriers. Um, created a bit of a door. Like you can see, just the piece is constantly evolving, which is exactly what I'm going for here. Um, then, using the same pieces from the bars, I kind of brought them down, extruded it, because now they're kind of the um, uh, the supports of the actual stairs and putting it all together. And then just cleaning everything up just so it looks a little bit nicer. And you can really kind of start seeing the building at the end. Now the material does a lot of the heavy lifting and I don't go into how I created the material in this video, but I will put it in another video, just kind of like as a separate unit. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. If you're still here, that's great. Let me know what you think of this type of video as well. So moving along, I think from here, maybe I might jump into another blend file. Nope, not yet. Now we start adding in pipes. So adding in all those extra pipes, extra details, so on and so forth. 
just to give the building a little bit more character. In retrospect, I reckon I probably should have added in more pipes and more cables, so on and so forth. But I don't think that's exactly the aesthetic that we're going for here. Um, using the curve, mon um, sorry, using a Bezier curve, then I can use an array and a curve to create pipes that follow a Bezier curve. You can draw them onto the building as well, but I kind of just wanted to do it manually. I still do prefer the spin tool. I think that's the fastest way as I'm using it right now, um, but each to their own. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but yeah, we're just kind of going through that process of adding pipes. Now I'm like, cool, let's start adding in some of the kit bashing items from my kit bashing set. Um, there is a free version as well. It's a little bit older now, but then the current one is textured. However, I don't think I ended up using the textures on here just specifically because it didn't fit the building itself. Look at that. Without any textures, gorgeous. <laughs> um, so I started stealing parts from one of the other buildings. And this is just kind of like going through that kit bashing process of finding it and putting it in the right spot. And I mean, the building does look gorgeous. However, now it's time to start doing all the panels. And the way I've done these panels, and I do them two different methods. One of them is where I do a bevel and increase the amount of cuts. And then from there, control numpad minus to minimize my selection and then alt S to scale along the normals. That gives me those indents. Um, and then from here, yeah, I continued on. I thought I recreated the panels using solidify modifier, um, but that's how I normally do my spaceships. And now we're just kind of like putting in cuts where I think would be the correct process. Just created a bit of a, almost like a gutter runoff there. Cause I just found that that cut off the balcony just seemed a little bit too bland. So from here, very simple in creating the door frames, grab the edge, extruded the edge, um, separated by parts and then put a solidify modifier. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, nice and easy. And then we're creating the window seals and all that kind of stuff kind of like it is fairly basic stuff. I am moving a lot around the building, um, just finding all the little elements that I need to resolve and kind of constantly growing on them. Um, just fixing up the, the, the rafters, is that what you call them? No, the support frames. What I did inside here is I encased the interior in its own box. That's because then the exterior walls can have a different color to the interior walls and also different sizing of the room on the inside. Obviously, because I've done that as well, that means I don't have to have so much stuff on the interior because you have to remember that we're kind of just hiding things and placing stuff in there. The big thing around this building and this shot specifically is that we're not gonna be seeing a lot of details. This might be just where the camera is just um, coming along with the characters as we walk past this shot. And so that's, I've always had that in mind. So whenever you're building a scene, you know, there's no point in building the back of the scene if you're never gonna see that scene. Where I've encompassed the whole scene and gone around the whole scene because at the end of the day, I can now rotate this building 180 degrees and it's a different building. So these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. Once again, just going through the um, kit bashing set, throwing in some more parts and just building up that aesthetic and pretty chuffed on how that's turning out. And then I was trying to think of a nice idea around the LED lights down the bottom. Um, I did initially leave it bland, but then we come back to that later on. Here I created what I think is called French doors. And so what was that happened there is I split it off into three and then used the um, 3D cursor to rotate the objects around that. Another piece from the kit bashing set, we actually built that one on live stream. Um, here we built these on live stream as well. So I'm grabbing common assets and common elements that we can use across the buildings. And obviously when we go ahead, create the next building, we will do the same thing. Um, if you want me to go through like the full process, of creating this building, let me know. Um, this is us grabbing the shelves as well. 
Now the shelves are just an image on the inside that are projecting um, that there's stuff in the fridge. Um, and that's all AI generated as well. Stuff on the counter there is AI generated um, just to kind of like speed up that process. Which in this day and age, I think we have to start using those kinds of elements. Is it cheating? Eh, I don't think so. Um, that's, that's a whole other story. We're not going to talk about that. So this is where I introduced the material. Um, and I built this in a separate blend file because I didn't want to wreck this one, didn't know what was going to happen. But I'll do a breakdown of that um, in a future video. So yeah, like I've said, like and subscribe. Here with these lights, so try to give them a bit of a multicolor. I think it just adds to a really nice aesthetic, putting in that barrier there as well. Since doing this though, I have uh, thought about some other ways to do signage. Another tutorial. <laughs> So be prepared for that one. Um, that would be a super th quick thing. Um, you can do it using uh, Inkscape, um, but I there's a Blender add-on that I use now to go from 2D to 3D. And so, yeah, now it's just kind of like the finishing touches. And, yeah, really liking it. So doing some UV unwrapping here, trying to differentiate where all that UV wrapping is going just kind of break up so it doesn't look like just the one image. And you can see UV unwrapping is not too difficult on simple things, um, but complex things I try to avoid doing UV unwrapping and just using a uh, procedural texture. And then there we go. It's just all kind of like little small assets that you're probably not really going to notice. But, yeah, it's gorgeous. I'm really proud of, of what I've created. And I look forward to all the next buildings that come out from this. And now it's just, yeah, it's all about refining those details. I will probably put this one up on Patreon and every subsequent building that I do create will go up on Patreon as well. And then hopefully I can get like six or seven buildings all together and it looks great. Uh, I was actually on Discord at this point. I was talking to someone uh, who was giving me suggestions on just to pretty it up a little bit. And so that's why all this is kind of happening. But yeah, like and subscribe. And um, don't need too much cheese. And also, if you've made it this far, thank you.